I've cried and you'd think I'd be better for it. But the sadness just sleeps and it stays in my spine for the rest of my life. Connor Oberst The Thanksgiving weekend shift loomed large, a stark contrast to the recent family feast. As I trudged through the airport, a familiar sense of anticipation mixed with dread settled in. The biting wind and swirling snow hinted at a potential reprieve, a chance to escape a busy night of flight. Fate had other plans. The hangar door barely closed behind me when the familiar tone sounded, signaling a new call. A flicker of defiance flared, quickly extinguished by the sliver of moonlight peeking through the hangar windows calling us into the fray. The weather break was a cruel tease, a brief respite before the inevitable as the whine of the rotors began. As we hovered over the scene, a massive house emerged from the snow-covered landscape, its windows glowing with an eerie intensity. A crowd had gathered, their faces illuminated by the flickering ambulance lights. We touched down in a field near the airport, a puzzling decision given the proximity and the local EMS's capabilities. After a soft landing, we trudged through the waist-deep snow, the icy wind stinging our faces. The tracks in the snow told a chilling tale, a high-speed collision, a violent ejection, and a desperate struggle for survival. The snowmobile lay on its side, a mangled testament to the force of the impact. The patient, a boy on the cusp of manhood, lay motionless. His snowsuit was unzipped, revealing a smear of blood on his cheek. Paramedics worked frantically to save his life, their eyes filled with relief as we approached. They had struggled to secure an airway, resorting to a bag-valve mass device. His pulse was weak and thready, his heart rate dangerously low. Death was watching quietly from above. As we assessed the situation, a grim realization dawned on me. His airway was destroyed, and his trachea was torn from its usual attachments. A surgical airway was the only option, a procedure few emergency residents ever perform on a live patient. But thanks to rigorous training, I felt a flicker of confidence. With the grim realization that a surgical airway was the only option, I prepared myself. Few emergency residents ever perform this procedure on a live patient. But thanks to rigorous training, I felt a flicker of confidence. The paramedic quickly disinfected the neck with a splash of betadine. I located the central part of the airway, placed a needle in the center of the bruised neck, and cut down onto the needle entering his trachea. With a practiced motion, I passed the ET tube through the newly created hole. The paramedics began to bag the patient, and his heart rate started to climb. We secured the endotracheal tube and refastened the rigid cervical collar. Our team loaded rapidly into the helicopter and departed briskly for the short flight. The experience left us all charged, a stark reminder of the power of preparation and the importance of never giving up. I was grateful for the training that had equipped me to handle such a critical situation. It was a testament to the value of experience and the confidence it instilled in the face of adversity. This patient had been on the brink of death when we arrived. Our intervention had made all the difference. The family was emotionally overwhelmed, their relief palpable. We safely delivered our precious cargo to the receiving trauma team and returned to the airport. As I peered out my hangar window, the storm had intensified, creating near whiteout conditions. It was a fitting end to a day filled with both terror and triumph. As I lay in bed that night, I reflected on the day's events. I was grateful for the training that had equipped me to handle such a critical situation. It was a testament to the value of experience and the confidence it instilled in the face of adversity. I pulled up the heavy blanket, sank into the warmth of the bed, and thanked the universe for today.